coast to coast, coast to coast, double nickels, woo hoo! Today, we are gonna use an antenna that I have never used before. Inside these bags somewhere is a doublet. So let's check it out. So this doublet antenna was sent to me by Matt, K7UAP. You guys might know him in uh, all the live chats as Snow Cones. So thank you, Snow Cones. I guess he's selling these, kinda. If you DM him on Discord, uh, you can get a hold of him that way. Uh, don't ask me any other details, because I don't know. I know as much about how to get a hold of them as uh, I know about this antenna. But if you know how to use Discord, you can get them. So I've got two bags here. Presumably this is the ladder line and radiating element, perhaps. Uh, and then in this bag, I think are just extra parts. I'm not sure. But one of the main parts we need for this doublet antenna is this LDG 4 to 1 Ballon. Not an un, -un a Ballon. Balanced to unbalanced. Ballon. Not a Balon, not a Balloon. Ballon. And we also need a tuner, which I had to find this guy. I didn't know where it was. It was, turns out it was up in my attic. I haven't used a tuner in so long. So I'm gonna go uh, try and make some sense of this. I know that at some point the uh, antenna connects to these guys here. Interesting fact about the doublet, back in the mid 80s, uh, this was actually invented by the Doublement twins and they couldn't think of a name. One wanted to call it Charlene, one wanted to call it Marlene. So they settled on the doublet. So let's uh, watch me make a fool of myself and try and set this up. So the first part I gotta do is uh, unwind this without getting it any more tangled than I already have. Uh, but I believe we've got about 30 feet of uh, like homebrew twin lead, ladder line kind of stuff. And then I think 45 feet maybe for each leg of the uh, uh, antenna wire. So once I get it all <laughs> figured out, I'll show you. Uh. Yeah, I've got this all kinds of, let's see here. I guess I should maybe walk it out. Probably be a smart thing to do. So snow cones absolutely swears by these antennas. So if this doesn't work well, we're definitely gonna blame him. That's a lot of wire, good Lord. So maybe that will work to our advantage, okay. So now we've got the center here, and then I just have to walk out the ladder line and then untangle everything. It's not too bad. But right off the bat, he had a lot of wire wrapped around here. If there could maybe be like, you know, some metal horns there to keep the, to keep the wire in and a little more tidy, could be a nice, addition to this winder but I mean everything is pretty pretty solid it's all 3d printed stuff way 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 better than I can ever 3d print anything Matt I would have had an NFED half wave already up by this time <laughs> but I understand that a lot of people have exponentially more patience than I do all right so that actually only took like three minutes to unwind all that stuff. And this is my first time, so who knows? But I still got to stretch it all out. Hey now. All right, let's see here. Some wire goes that way and some wire goes that way. Hi, Mom. Did I mention the bands are absolute garbage today too? So this should be really fun. Got some twists in our ladder line. All right, I think we're ready to put her up. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. So here's the end of the ladder line and you can see we're going all the way out right by the lake. And then we've got our center here 
So that's our center support and then either leg of the antenna is gonna be there. I like the high-vis orange, I think it's silicone wire. Uh, probably the BN Tech Go stuff, maybe 22 gauge, I feel. And then he's got some really, really high-vis uh, orange paracord here to tie off the legs. These really nice 3D printed kind of insulator jobbies. I mean, this is really well constructed. Very, very nice job. So we've got about, uh, I think he said 45 feet of wire for each leg. So it goes another 45 feet that way. We're gonna run it as an inverted V. And he says maximum height or ideal height rather should be like seven to 10 meters high at the apex. So I've got my soda beams, or excuse me, spider beams, 12 meter mast. So I'm just not gonna put it up all the way. And then uh, we'll plug it into the ballon and the tuner and all that stuff and we'll see what that looks like. The other thing that may or may not work is where I actually put this mast. Cause as I raise this up, the ladder line's gonna pull as well. So I just got a little S beaner on here. Hopefully this fits, it does, great. And uh, I think I'll leave the first section collapsed and we'll just go up and see what's happening. Yeah, I can already tell I need to move the mast closer to the table as we go up because all this ladder line's being pulled towards me and I'm only a few sections up. It's probably 15 feet up or so. So let me move this mast closer to the table. All right, we should be good to go now. And I'll tell you, for the looks of this antenna, it's definitely getting some cool points already. Now let's go one more section, maybe. How many, how many left do I have? I've got two more sections left in the mast. So, whatever that is. Now, I just have to guy the antenna wire, radiating element, with the supplied black stakes, and do it for the other side. And how about this view, huh? So now, all we have to do is the little finish, finishing, finishing touches, finishing. So we need a good tuner in line. Your tuner inside your radio is probably not gonna cut it. So this is the MFJ 939, great, great tuner. And we wanna use fairly short runs of coax. Um, three feet or less is ideal to connect the radio to the antenna from the tuner, from the tuner to the ballon, okay? So this part is gonna go to the radio. Now's the time where I can say, you can save 10% off Messi and Poloni coaxial cable, either at messi.it or at gigaparts. At messi.it, if you use code K8MRD, you get free shipping over 99 euro to the US and Canada. Or at gigaparts, you can use code MP10 if, if you wanna save money. I'm using Messi and Poloni uh, uh, Ultraflex 7 Sahara. So now we've got the radio plugged in, the tuner plugged in, and now from the antenna side, we're gonna plug this in to the ballon. Like, yaw. And then we can take our ladder line and screw them to these terminals. Maybe. It's probably better to do this before you raise the antenna because it just wants to pull, but that's okay. Shouldn't matter which one, it's just a dipole, essentially. And uh, that just kind of hangs there like that. And that's it. And when she's all erected, ballon, ladder line going up, and then the wire going down and you can even see, maybe, I can't, where is it? Somewhere over there is the, uh, oh, there it is. The uh, insulator's there. So, we should be ready to get on the air. So I'm not gonna lie, that is a pretty sexy looking antenna there. 
all that beautiful ladder line going up. All right, so I made a couple changes. I ended up uh, lengthening the mast one more section. I wanted to get the un, -un a little more off the ground. I don't know if that matters or not, but that's what I did. Uh, and by doing that, when you raise the center, you got to bring in each leg a couple feet. So you get to walk, you know, 80, 90 feet a couple times, but whatever. This is the first time I ever used it, so I'm pretty excited. Let's see how it tunes. All right, so Matt tells me this should tune 80 through 6. My tuner is actually not very good for 6, so I don't expect that to happen, but we got to try 80 meters just because. So we got CW going. Eh, we'll go down. Eh, we'll put it at 69%. Why not? Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Perfect match. Perfect match on 160 meters. Let's try 80 towards the lower end. Eh, about 1.5 to 1. Let's embiggen that. Yeah, about 1.7 towards the bottom end. Let's see if we can get a little better tune. No, that's about it. Let's go up to the top of 80. Somewhere around there. 1.2, 1 1.3, whatever you want to call that. Let's try 40 right in the middle of the band. Ha! <laughs> Perfect. That's great. 30 meters, 1.1-ish, that's awesome. 20 meters, somewhere around the middle, 1.5-ish, all right. 17 meters, 1.0 to 1, <laughs> I mean, absolutely perfect there. Uh, 12 meters, no, 15 meters, what is this? 1.4, 1.5, somewhere around there. Yeah, 1.3, 1.4, somewhere totally, totally doable. Uh, where are we? 15, let's go to 12. 1.5-ish there. 10 meters, kind of towards the bottom, somewhere around there. 1.4, 1.5, let's go all the way up. Somewhere around there. 1.3-ish. Let's go up to the FM portion, just for giggles. Yeah, 1.7, 1.8, not terrible. I don't think this tuner is going to do six, but we'll try it anyway. Nope, doesn't even do anything. Doesn't even know it's there. Wonder if the internal tuner will do it. Nope. So no six meters with my setup. Ah, but wait. I actually did get it to tune on six, kind of. I mean, it's doing something. It's not very good. Down at the bottom of the band, 2.5 to 1. Let's go up eh, around the FT8 frequency. Eh, I mean, we could use it. It wouldn't be very great, but it would work, kind of. Coast to coast, coast to coast, double nickels, woo -hoo! So first contact, I wasn't recording, but of course, Greg KJ6ER is out there on uh, 15 meters. So there you go, Greg. And there it is in the log. First contact with the doublet. Whew, after action report. See, I don't film the on the air stuff because the analytics say that everybody tunes off once I start getting on the air. So I didn't film any of that, but holy crap, I made a lot of contacts. I started off actually tuning around a bit uh, on digital modes, just kind of checking the bands. I got a few contacts on 10 meter FT8 and I actually was having some problems. Uh, I was getting that audio error thing Something was going on, so I took this choke, I put it everywhere I could think of. I put it at the radio, I put it at the antenna, I put it at the radio part of the tuner thing here, and uh, I don't know what the deal is. Um, sometimes the choke helped, sometimes it didn't, so um, I kind of suspect it might be this cable, but I use this with all kinds of other antennas and I don't have any issues, so I don't know what the heck the deal is with that. But I made a couple contacts on 10 meter FT8, then I hopped down to 40 meters, because 40 was actually open, and in like eight minutes, I worked 10 contacts. Then I went down to 20 meters, or up, however you want to say it, and just ginormous pile up. I mean, I think the ARL knew I was out here and they turned the bands on or something, because I got all over the place on 20 meters. 
Then I went to 18 meters or, or 17 meters, excuse me. Got all kinds of contacts there. I worked Matt K7 UAP uh, several times on different bands. So that was, I think, three or four different contacts. Uh, I worked all over the country from all the way east, all the way up to Maine, all the way, the whole left coast, bunch of Washington, Oregon, California, got a bunch of DX. I got France, uh, uh, I think Dominican Republic or maybe Cuba, uh, wherever the heck, somewhere in South America. Then on 15 meters, it was kind of slow going, but then they just started coming out of the woodwork. I'm getting more uh, left coast. And then all of a sudden, this VK station comes in, in Australia. So we worked Australia on 15 meters. Signal reports are about a 5.2, 5.3. Perfect audio, but the, just the signal weren't, weren't strong. Fantastic, so on sideband, this thing kicks ass. Changing bands, no problem. You need the tuner, love it. Really the only downside would be just kind of, I don't know, Matt says you're not supposed to use a long coax to the Ballon, the four to one Ballon. So that could be an issue if you're, if you kind of need to get the antenna away from where you actually are. And I'm thinking like field day or just depending on your topography, you know, I'm out here alone in the park so I can kind of do whatever I want. But if you can't use more coax, it might be an issue and you got to keep the ladder line away from metal, I'm told. But as a first time user of a doublet antenna, dude, I'm floored with this thing, man. I mean, you got 90 feet of radiating element in the air up, I don't know, eight, 10 meters. I have no idea how high it is. It's, it's not fully uh, extended. It kicks ass. I worked multiple different people on multiple different bands, WD4DAN. I think I got them on all four bands that I worked except for 10 meters. Um, just absolutely incredible. So uh, I said it, I said thank you on the air to Matt, but I want to say thank you again for sending this to me. Uh, he is selling them, he says. Uh, I don't think he's really selling them hard, but if, you, if you're interested in this, hit him up on Discord. He's under Snow Cones or Matt K7 UAP. I, I don't know how to find people on Discord, but don't ask me, that's how you do it. Dude, I, I'm, I'm floored. So all you doublet guys out there, <laughs> let me know about the coax. Uh, I would love to use this in a more versatile environment, thinking like if I could put the transformer somewhere else or the, or the un -un rather, get it away from me if I need to move the antenna. Right now the mass is about 20 feet for me and that's, that's about as far as you can really move it. Uh, but that, I'm, I'm just getting Australia on 15 meters in the middle of the day. Uh, you you kind of can't beat that, but Matt also did some modeling on this and this antenna is kind of directional depending on the band you're on. So I'm not looking at it right now, but I'll flash it on the screen here. Like 40 meters seems kind of omnidirectional, then some other bands, you get some really crazy lobes, then other bands are kind of more just, um, you know, east, west or north, south, whatever, you know, whatever direction the antenna's uh, kind of pointing. So a really, really neat antenna as far as setup. It probably took me, uh, without filming, maybe 15 minutes, and I suspect that will go down as I get more comfortable with this antenna, because I, I mean, you guys literally watched me take it out of the bag for the very first time, so this is my absolute first time ever using this or unraveling it or deploying it or anything, and it just kicked ass. So now that I've rambled on long enough, Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you everyone who hunted me on all the different bands today. Great activation, beautiful location, and thank you for watching K8MRD radio stuff, except this is called Ham Radio Tube now. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye.